Thank you for joining us to learn more about the Tobacco-Free Campus Initiative here at Duke. My name is Julie Harris, and I'm the Program Coordinator for the Tobacco-Free Campus Initiative. And my name is Kendra Pauline, and I'm a Clinical Research Coordinator, and I work with the Quit at Duke program. During this presentation, we will share with you the tobacco-free policy and what tobacco products are included in the policy. We will share with you tobacco treatment resources available to students, employees, contract workers, and loved ones. And lastly, we will share with you what is expected of everyone who works, studies, and visits Duke when we return to campus, hopefully soon. Duke University is committed to providing a safe and healthy working and learning environment for the students, employees, contract workers, vendors, and visitors on its campus. That is one of the main reasons Duke is joining over 2,000 other colleges and universities that are now smoke and tobacco free. This tobacco free policy states that Duke University will be a tobacco free campus on July 1st, 2020. This means that all tobacco products, including cigarettes, cigars, hookah, e-cigarettes, jewel or vape, snuff, snooze, puff bars, and icos, as well as any other forms of tobacco, will be prohibited in any building or on any grounds owned or leased by Duke. To be clear, this includes all e-cigarettes and vape products. Tobacco is the single most harmful legal substance that has ever been brought to the market. Smoking kills more people than alcohol, AIDS, car accidents, illegal drugs, murders, and suicides combined, year in and year out. Smoking kills roughly 480,000 people in the United States every year. These are completely preventable deaths. The policy is not saying that you are required to quit. It is saying that you won't be able to use tobacco products on campus. That's an important distinction. Just as we can't smoke or vape on airplanes, we won't be able to use tobacco products here at Duke. This tobacco-free environment policy applies to everyone. To successfully implement a tobacco-free policy, universities need to offer accessible, free or low cost and effective tobacco treatment services for everyone. I'm going to ask my colleague, Kendra Pauline, our clinical research coordinator for Quit at Duke to share with you all the treatment services that are available to the Duke community. Thank you, Julie. There are many different resources that are available to students, employees, contract workers, and visitors seeking help with either reducing or quitting tobacco products. I want to run through a short summary of each of these, starting with Student Health and Live for Life, the Employee Wellness Program. Both of these services utilize a tobacco treatment specialist, which is a provider who has extensive training in helping people manage their nicotine dependence. Both services offer several different treatment approaches, including free or low cost FDA approved medications and different types of behavioral counseling. Quit at Duke is a clinical program that is available to anyone in the local community. This program operates within the triangle area and offers quit smoking medications, behavioral counseling, and a free mindfulness group therapy. For more information about the cost of this service or insurance coverage, please contact the number listed on the slide. If you are a student seeking additional support, Blue Devils Care provides 24-7 mental telehealth support to all Duke students at no cost. For more information about this service, you can visit the website listed on the slide. The North Carolina Quit Line is a program that offers free FDA-approved smoking cessation medication and free telephone coaching for North Carolina residents. It is offered in several different languages and is a great program for people who don't have health insurance. If you are a student seeking support prior to returning to campus, the quit line is an option for you as each state has their own quit line. Finally, the Durham County Health Department operates a program called Bull City Breathe, which offers free classes, medications, and a monthly support group to help people quit using tobacco products. 
Finally, I will add that each of these resources provides an individualized approach to help you meet your tobacco goals. Kendra, thank you so much for sharing these resources with us. Even if you don't want to quit, maybe you do want to cut down on how much you are smoking or vaping. We want to help you get through the day so that you are adhering to the policy when you are on campus. I'd like to next share with you the community expectations we have around the policy. Number one, we expect that people will, will refrain from using tobacco products while they are on campus. Number two, we want to encourage people to meet with a provider and create an individualized treatment plan before returning to campus. And lastly, when you are here, please seek out support and resources. This policy is the shared responsibility of all Duke students and employees. Everyone is authorized and encouraged to communicate this policy with courtesy, respect, and diplomacy. If difficulties arise with adherence, an employee or student may make a confidential report to a supervisor or manager. What happens if I vape or smoke after July 1st, 2020? <clears throat> In general, supervisors are responsible for ensuring that students and employees under their direction are aware of the policy and are aware of tobacco treatment services that are available. If someone has a pattern of not adhering to the policy, supervisors may take appropriate action to correct non-adherence through either student disciplinary channels or through human resource channels if you're an employee. A policy violation will be handled like any other similar policy violations on a case-by-case -case basis. To summarize, we shared with you the tobacco-free campus policy that goes into effect on July 1st, 2020. We shared with you which tobacco, treat, which tobacco products are included in that policy. We also shared tobacco treatment resources and community expectations for everyone on campus. Now more than ever, our lungs matter. Smoking, vaping, and secondhand smoke exposure compromising our lung function and even brief exposure to secondhand smoke makes breathing difficult. Our campus environment should not induce coughs, sneezing, wheezing, or shortness of breath. These are behaviors that can spread or exacerbate COVID-19. During this time of a global pandemic, returning to campus should be as worry-free as possible. Everyone wants to feel confident about returning to regular activities. Duke is committed to protecting your health with COVID-19 and in the absence of the virus. For more information, please contact us if you have any questions or concerns. And you can find out more about the policy and other resources on the Healthy Duke website. It also includes a toolbox for supervisors, which includes a sample script to use with an employee or with a student who may smoke on campus and how to have a difficult conversation with them. Take care and stay healthy. We look forward to seeing everyone back on our tobacco-free campus when we return. I'd like to thank my colleague, Kendra Pauline, our clinical research coordinator, for joining me today to share this information with you. Thanks again. <laughs>